You are listening to the Pompet Podcast, the edutainment podcast about lifestyle, wine, and spirits, hosted by Yolanda Shoshana. Let's get this party started. Hey, hey, it's Yolanda Shoshana. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Pompet Podcast. Uh, Pompet means tipsy in French, so now you know. Let's talk vodka. Vodka is the king of spirits for women. Women absolutely love vodka, with whiskey like right there behind it on its coattails. But vodka is not going anywhere, y'all. So let's talk about Grey Goose and Grey Goose interpreted by Decasse. I have to admit, I slept on Grey Goose until last year. I had completely forgotten about it. I knew it was out there, but it wasn't my go-to vodka or a spirit I was even thinking about until I got invited to an event downtown. The Grey Goose Camionette was going to be in town, and I was offered an appointment, and I thought, why not? This Camionette travels the world. It's known as the world's most intimate bar because it only seats two people and the bartender so basically it's you one other person and the bartender it was so lovely because it's so cute and very classic i got to have three classic cocktails made by the bartender and i loved every minute of it what i got to remember though is that gray goose is made in france being a huge francophile i was like voila i'm back uh, fast forward to the end of, toward the end of last year, around October, the end of October, I was invited to a master class with a distiller of Grey Goose. Francois Thibault was going to be in town and they were going to do a lunch. And that lunch is where I really learned so much more about the brand, things that I did not know and hadn't thought about in years. Uh, Grey Goose is actually made for Americans. It is a luxury brand targeted to Americans. But, of course, French people do drink it as well. It is made with a soft winter wheat. Uh, the wheat, I believe, is from Picardy. And then it is distilled in cognac. In fact, to me, the vodka is very much made like a cognac. Uh, which is not a surprise because Francois Thibault was born and raised in cognac. His family made cognac. He made cognac for a a bit, and then he went and he learned how to make wine. And then he kind of got a tap on the shoulder from Sidney Frank, the self-made billionaire who wanted to start this luxury vodka. He kind of tapped him on the shoulder and said, hey, I want to make this luxury vodka because I see a need in the market. Can you help me? I guess Francois liked a challenge because... He didn't know anything about vodka, but he said yes. <laughs> uh, and the rest is kind of their history. He taught himself the process of making vodka. He says it's very similar to making wine and cognac. And this is now what we have in this beautiful bottles, this beautiful gray goose. Um, I loved hearing the history of it. I thought it was just so interesting. And everything that they do is in France, their products are from France, from, there's a Cherry Noir vodka, the cherries are going to be from France, the Citron is from France, so they they like to get local, their Anjou apples, no, that's the pear, Anjou is where you get the pears from, and all this wonderful, delectable stuff that goes into their bottles is very French and made with love. They also, what I found to be so interesting, they've worked with the Perfume Institute to make sure that what you smell coming out of the bottle is pleasant and beautiful. Because uh, as Thibault said, that once you distill something, it changes the way that something smells. So they've made sure that there are these special little touches that go into each bottle. Which brings me to Grey Goose in, interpreted by Dacos. That is Alan Dacos, the renowned chef. They have done a collaboration to create a vodka. What I love about Dacos is he said he did not want to make a flavored vodka. He was like, Mm-mm, not about that life. And he also said this is his only collaboration he will be doing with spirits, which I love. I love it when you can kind of put your foot down and go, uh, not about that life, but I will do this. So the Grey Goose interpreted by Dacos is very much 
like regular gay goose with special touches. There are notes of cocoa, uh, coffee beans, and vanilla in the vodka. I do think that someone with a more sophisticated palate might be able to taste those notes. Because I, I've read that some people don't taste a difference, but I believe it's also about your palate. If your palate is more advanced, more sophisticated, it's going to pick it out right there. I can pick them out. And I love the, the vodka myself. It's also the first gastronomy vodka, so it's meant to, to have when you have food. So, you know, next time you're having a good meal and you want some vodka, this is something that you can sip. Maybe add a little something to the vodka. They say to drink the vodka with a couple of drops of chocolate bitters. I made a beautiful white Russian with it. A fancy white Russian, that is. I just think that the hint of cocoa and coffee go really great uh, with the cream and the Kahlua. But the one thing that I did mix together with it, which I thought was just stunning and what I call an orgasm in a glass, is Frangelico. Frangelico is this lovely hazelnut liqueur from Italy. So I put some Frangelico on ice and then I poured in some of the Grey Goose interpreted by Decoste. And I'm going to tell you, it's magic in a glass. It's just beautiful. They bring out each other in the most wonderful way. I've been looking at that bottle of Frangelico for a while, not knowing what I wanted to do with it. But as soon as I got this Grey Goose, I was like that, 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 and it wins. Hashtag winning. So good. I would pair it with a dessert, like a brownie, um, some chocolate cake, also some nice hard cheese, like, um, an aperitif, like right before. But I also think it would go good if you have something that has a peanut sauce or a sauce that has some nuts in it. It would be so delicious with that. So I think it's a wonderful vodka. I highly recommend it for a gift. You know, Valentine's day is right around the corner. So if you have a vodka lover in your life, getting it as a gift is awesome. But if you're going to have a wonderful meal at home, it's also good to just put in your home bar if you entertain at home. It's just wonderful to have, and it gives like a little kick to the Grey Goose in your life. It comes in a wooden um, gift box, which is also lovely, and it's a different bottle as well, so there's some special touches to the bottle. But it's just nice to have in the home bar if you are a Grey Goose fan. If you have slept on Grey Goose, though, get back in there. You know, there, it's like tequila. So many vodkas, so little time. and Because there's so much vodka on the market. And some of them are really just awful. But you know the French and the quality they like to put into a bottle. That's exactly what you get in a Grey Goose. So get back on there. Even if, you know, the Grey Goose by the cost isn't your jam, I highly recommend you just try and get Goose again. Just remind yourself what a great vodka it is and how smooth it can be and you're not going to have a hangover in the next day, which is always wonderful. Because some of these vodkas out here, woo child, woo. You know, you sip it and you're like, oh my God, what am I doing to myself? <laughs> so anyway, uh, don't forget to go to a witch in the world.com for some drink recipes and all that good stuff. Don't forget to sign up for Pompette, my curated newsletter, uh, booze news curated by moi. If you don't want to sign up for it, it's all good. You can find the newsletter on my LinkedIn if you were if we're connected on LinkedIn, it's going to now be on my blog there so you can still get the news. Because I get it. How many newsletters do you really want in your mailbox? So many, right? Until next time, peace, love, and cheers.